Yes, being dehydrated literally slows down your fat loss. And I wanna break it down because everyone just says, drink more water, it's good for you, drink more water, it's gonna help you stay healthy, drink more water, it might help you burn fat. But I'm here to literally explain some of the science as to why dehydration honestly slows down your fat loss and why it's so important to remain hydrated. And I don't just mean drinking water, I mean taking extra measures to truly be hydrated with the right mineral balance too. So please stay through the entire video because I'm gonna give you a quick tip that's gonna save you. It's gonna absolutely make it so you retain more water in the right places, are less bloated, and are hydrated enough to burn some good fat. So let's talk about what happens, okay? When you burn fat, your liver has a level of metabolism that occurs, right? You actually start breaking down fatty acids and your liver processes them into usable forms of energy or excretes them. Well, here's the thing, if you're dehydrated, then the kidneys don't function well, right? The kidneys are unable to really process because they're not getting the fluid that they need. What does this mean? Well, it means they slow down and it means that the liver comes to save the day and helps out the kidneys, which means that now the liver is doing part of the kidneys work. Since the kidneys are fatigued and can't do it, the liver takes the brunt of the load. So basically, the liver's babysitting two kids instead of one. Well, that means that it ends up diversifying the energy of the liver, taking away from the potential ability to burn fat in the liver so that the liver can help the kidneys. Does that make sense? Basically, you're depriving the liver of its ability to help you burn fat by being dehydrated. But then there's a reason from an endocrinology standpoint as to why we want to stay hydrated. And that has to do with our friend HGH, human growth hormone. Most of you guys are probably just thinking about bodybuilders taking exogenous forms of human growth hormone, but the reality is we need it. And we need the natural kind that our body is producing. And when we're dehydrated, our brain, our pituitary, our hypothalamus, it's not secreting or signaling enough of the human growth hormone. Well, here's what happens. Human growth hormone binds to receptor cells on the fat cell. And when that happens, it causes triglycerides to become mobilized and utilized, meaning it shrinks the fat cell. So yeah, human growth hormone literally helps you burn some more fat. And dehydration literally takes away from your body's ability to produce it. So there's another reason from a hormone standpoint why dehydration dramatically affects you. Now let's break down the cognitive side of things. And you might be thinking, how does this connect with fat loss? But I'll bridge the gap in just a second. Did you know that all you have to do is be dehydrated by 2%? That's the number two, two, two percent to actually cause a 30% decrease in cognitive function. 2% dehydration equals 30% cognitive decline. Do the math. Imagine if you're 4% dehydrated. Well, it's pretty crazy. And when we look at some of the studies, it gets even more nuts. Here's a study that was pulled with some significant data from an older analysis. A recent study took a deep dive look at dehydration and obesity. And what this study did is it pulled data from the National Health and Nutrition Exam Survey that took 9,500 participants and had taken urine samples years before. So they looked at these urine samples and what they were measuring was how dehydrated they were. Well, what they found was that about a third of them were dehydrated. Well, here's the interesting part. What they ended up ultimately finding was that you had a 1.59 times increased risk of being obese if you were dehydrated. You see, by looking at 9,500 participants, it was easy to see who was obese, who was also dehydrated, and cross-reference. And that's just talking about obese people, not even talking about overweight. We're talking about clinically obese. 1.59 times the chance of being obese simply by being dehydrated. So what can you do? Well, drink more water. I'll see you later. No, okay. Really what you wanna do is you wanna start implementing some very strategic things. First thing in the morning, drink one to two glasses of water. Hands down, no exceptions. Before you touch tea, before you touch coffee, the worst way to start your day is by consistently dehydrating yourself with coffee or tea. Start with water. But next up, add salt to your water. People are so afraid of salt because they think it's gonna bloat them. And in kind of some kind of thought process, yeah, that makes sense. But in reality, it actually helps you hydrate more. If you don't have enough salt, then what ends up happening is your body will actually eventually retain it because your body's trying to hold on to what little bits of sodium and water it has, so it holds on to it. So add more salt, your body will excrete the excess water and store what it needs. But by adding salt, you also create what's called an isotonic state, allowing water to absorb from the small intestine into the cell. You see, sodium is very positively charged. It's a positively charged ion. 
and it reacts with highly polarized water. That highly polarized water and the positively charged sodium creates almost a vacuum from the intestine into the cell, causing you to be really, truly, thoroughly hydrated at a cellular level, not just where you feel puffy. So there's the simple trick. Don't be afraid of salt. And if you're carrying around a gallon jug of water or something like that, add a quarter to a half teaspoon of water to that sucker. Make sure your minerals are in check to truly be hydrated. If you have any additional video ideas, make sure you list them out in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for three videos per week minimum, plus some live coaching broadcasts. I will see you in the next video.